Hello everyone. I'm back. Everybody there run. Okay. <laughs> it feels kind of good to be back. Um, I offered the other day to make a crafter friend um, a uh, snippet roll. And so she was also wondering if I could make a tutorial on how to make one so that uh, she could learn how to make one. So I agreed to do that. So what I am doing, I got a piece that's a little bit uneven here. I'm just going to try and straighten it out. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show the basics of making a snippet roll. And in my next video, I will show the snippets that I made to go on it and, uh, and how I attach them. Now, I know a lot of you out there know how to do snippets, snippet rolls, uh, but I'm doing this for a friend, so I'm going to talk basics pretty much. So the first thing that I did was I picked out a piece of this felted batting. It's it's almost like a felt, uh, but it, it's, I think, a little bit lighter in weight than a, a piece of felt. Um, I, you can buy this by the yard in uh, a fabric store, for instance, Joann's, uh, and you can find it in the interfacing section where they have the rolls of interfacing. And uh, what I did, <clears throat> first of all, I had to try and find a roll to, uh, to put it on. And I had this, I found this at um, a thrift store, my favorite thrift store, in a bag of other little wooden pieces. And it's just a little rolling pin. And it's not finished or anything, so I will be painting this and putting a little bit of decoration on it and it will go on the end of the snippet roll um, to roll the snippet roll on. And then now many people that I see out there making snippet rolls and have given the instructions on how to make the snippet rolls and stuff, um, all they use is a heavy piece of ribbon or a piece of canvas, um, something like that, you know. I'm sorry, I'll probably just keep drinking and drinking and drinking in front of you, but my throat is so dry I can't even hardly swallow. So, um, what I usually do when I make my snippet roll is I like to, like I said, to pick out this, cut up some of this, and uh, by the way, I made this 24 inches long. I have asked and asked and asked when I was trying to learn how to make them uh, from people as to how long a snippet roll should be. And obviously it's your choice, you know, however long you want to make it. Um, but I'm making this one 24 inches. That to me is a good length for a snipper roll. Uh, you get a lot on it. It looks good. Uh, you can hang it on the wall. Um, anyway, to me that seems to be uh, like the general consensus or, or what I usually see out of uh, people's snippet rolls and stuff. And I like to cover my felting 
with satin. So I have this piece of satin that came off of the satin wedding dress that I had purchased a while back, quite a while back. Uh, and it is uh, probably about 25 inches long. No, it's measuring. Mm. Parts of it are almost 25 inches long. Parts of it are just the 24 inches long. But I just, I cut it a little bit large because once I glue the satin onto the batting, then um, I can cut off any extras. And to me, it's an easier way to do it. You don't have to get precise measurements and it uh, <clears throat> looks good. So also what I'm using to glue it together is fabric tack. Now on these few, first few layers I do glue them because they're not generally the parts of the snippet that you cut off and use. Um, however you could at any time cut any part of, of these layers off and use them if that's what you choose to do. So I'm going to use the fabric glue and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn you down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fabric glue and I'm going to run a line. Of, well, I have, I have the satin shiny side down. Okay? And I'm just going to run a line of tacky glue right along the edge. Like that. Then I'm going to put the batting right over the top of it where just about a half an inch is turned over onto it. Make sure that I give that a few seconds to uh, dry so that what you end up with is like this. You have your batting, you have your satin. Now, I like finished edges. I, I always have. And in most of my snippet rolls, I've made like this because it does give a, a real nice finished edge. So now I'm going to take the batting and I'm going to turn it over. Like so. I forgot to bring some bring my pins in. Hold on one second, please. I'm very sorry. I have to run down the hall and get my pins. Be right back. All right, I'm back. I'm terribly sorry about that. Very unorganized of me. Okay, so it's just going to turn up like that so that you have just the half an inch, approximately half an inch here. And I'm just going to take a pin, a couple of pins, and pin it so that it's straight. Uh, now, satin isn't straight on it, the batting isn't straight on it, but this turned portion is perfectly straight. And that's what I'm looking for. Then, I'm just going to take 
a little bit of glue and glue down the sides. A lot of people you'll see that just they just use ribbon and and uh, lace and stuff to make it. They don't they don't go uh, through a lot of this, uh, which is fine. I mean, they all look beautiful too. But uh, this is just the way I prefer to do it. So then I take and put it so that it's facing the, the little stored edge is facing me. And I'm going to pull the satin up over the top. And once again, on this folded edge now, I'm going to put some pins. And once again, I'm going to glue down the ends. like so. Now I don't need to worry about a finished edge on either one of the ends because I'm going to uh, put one end on the spool and I'm going to finish off the other end in another way. So what I want to do is to take the pins out that I put in here and since that glue has dried enough to stick, I'm just going to put the pins back this way a little bit, out of my way, and easy to grab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this edge back so that it's just short of going all the way to the edge. Now I'm using satin, but you could surely use any type of material that you want. It can be a, a pretty bridal type material, or you could even use some country type material and uh, make it a country snippet. I mean, there's such a wide variety of uh, ways of doing these snippets. Nothing is 
definite. Okay, now see what we're going to end up there with there is an edge that I'm going to I'm going to glue down and I'm going to try and glue it as close to the edge as I can. So I'm just going right in here trying to keep it as close as possible And I'm pinning it again just so that it stays in place till it dries or sets. And if you wanted to have an absolutely crisp edge, you could just take and press this so that it lays down perfectly flat and you'll have a nice crisp edge. So it's really all just a matter of how how far you want to go, how much you want to do. Sounds like my dishwasher finally ended, finished. It is the noisiest dishwasher. It's a hand-me-down hand from my mother's house. She couldn't stand it anymore because it was so noisy. She wanted a new one. It worked perfectly well. And I didn't have a dishwasher in my house, even though it's all fitted for the plumbing and stuff. Uh, when they were first built, they had dishwashers in them. But that dishwasher has long since uh, conked out and bit the dust. But uh, anyway, my son was able to take her dishwasher and put it in my house and hook it up. And since the noise doesn't bother me as much as it bothers her, I found that it was a very profitable exchange. So, you have the finished edge on that side. You have the perfectly finished edge on that side. Now, if you're going to have your snippet roll going in this direction, I would put this edge up on on top because that's the edge that will be seen the most. With this edge down below underneath fringe or whatever. And of course, I'm going to make this, this side here, the back side, because this side here is perfectly smooth and finished off in all places. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off whatever extra satin there was beyond the batting on the two ends.
And like I said, you don't really need to finish off the ends because they're going to be finished off before the project is done. So then the next thing I do when I get this all set and the glue's all set and everything, then I have to go and pick a piece of lace to go over the top of all of it. So I picked out this piece here. Doesn't really show up laying down there. But I picked out this piece here. It has a nice um, scalloped edge that I can use and a nice pattern that's going to show on the front and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the side that goes down And I'm going to lay the fabric right where the scalloped edge hangs over. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to cut around that scalloped edge so that it looks better. And you'll see that in my next video when I have that part finished. But for now, I'm just going to take and put a strip of glue and you just want a thin strip of glue uh, fabric tack because you don't want it to show through the lace too much but there's not a whole lot that you can use to hold it in place unless you stitch it all on by hand. Okay, so there's the front side, and actually it will go this way. There's the front side, and when I get the scallop cut along the bottom, it will be really pretty along the bottom there. And it just covers the whole piece with a little bit of lace so that it fills in lace, you know, wherever you don't have a snippet or something. And I also cut this piece a little bit longer than the batting was so that I had room to work with. Then I'm going to turn it over. Well, actually, I'm going to glue it at the top also. just so that it doesn't sag. Like that. Okay, and I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to glue it to the bottom of the back side. Now the next time I do a video, you'll see how I've pressed everything out because I am going to press it and how much better it looks pressed than not pressed. And I'm just going to cut it straight off, even with the bottom. 
just the back piece, not the front piece. We're going to scallop that piece. Okay, so when I finish cutting all the scallops, they'll look like that, hanging down below. Okay, so now what I haven't done on here yet is I haven't pressed it. I didn't get my iron out um, and warm it up, so I can't sit here and press, stand here and press it right now. But you'll see that what the difference is when uh, I get it pressed. Okay, the ends are straight, cut off, just needs that edge down there on the bottom cut. Then I like to take one piece of lace that I especially like and place it all the way along the front side. So what I have had was <coughs> this piece of lace. <coughs> and I fed a piece of the purple ribbon through it at the top. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is I am going to put it on here like so. And I'm going to use a needle and thread and I'm going to stitch right along this little section right here. Okay, I'm just going to do a running stitch and I'm going to go right along there and it's going to be stitched right at the top so that it covers the whole front. Alright, so that's my next step. And then one other step that I've gotten ready here is when you do a snippet roll, you have to have some way of closing it. People have used thousands of different ways of closing them. They've used just pieces of ribbon that they tie. Uh, they've used buttons. They've used, uh, like I said, any number of different ways. Um, I'm going to use this. And I am going to put it Oh, I can't put that on there yet. I have to finish that edge off. Okay, but I'm going to use 
this along with this button. I'm also going to take these pearls and I'm going to stitch them right along the bottom edge of that ribbon. And I'll just use, again, a running snit stitch going over the string, maybe every two or three beads. I'll loop it over the, the string on the beads and then sew it, you know, going across. Uh, now, I'll show all this stuff to you when I do the second video um, and how I did it and explain a little bit, a little bit clearer and stuff. But this is the way I start a snippet roll. Um, I hope that it is helpful to some of you. Um, I especially hope that it's helpful to the one that I'm making this for. Um, and I probably am going to take a week or, or so or more to make the snippets that I'm going to put on it. And then I will come back and I will show you how I made the snippet and how I attach it to the snippet roll. Now, in a lot of cases, it's just maybe a little piece of ribbon or a little piece of lace or a little trinket or something like that. But I will put it all together in my next video and show you how I did everything that you didn't see me do in this video. So that, I guess, is it for now. I hope that uh, you enjoyed it and it was helpful. And now i got to find out where my mouse is. There he is. Found him. Bring him up here. Okay. So, anyway, I will be back with the second part of this video um, sometime soon. Next week or two. Okay? Bye.